Hey, so our next lesson in the conics unit is going to discuss an intro to parabolas, which I know that feels like an old topic for us because we have seen the graph of a quadratic function being a parabola, um, but we're going to take a, a conic approach to it today. So this is a nice visual, I think, for what the different conics are that we're going to discuss. So if you took a, a cone like this um, and you cut it straight across with a parallel plane to the base, you would create a circle. And that's how the formula for a circle in the coordinate plane is derived. And we've already done circles, right? That was another lesson we did. Um, logically, the next thing we should learn about is ellipse, but I have a feeling I'm going a little out of order. So if we haven't covered ellipse yet, that's because we're covering parabolas next which would be, see, it's kind of slanty going in there. It's going to create a parabolic looking shape here. And that's what we're going to look at today. So the formula for a parabola, it's not going to be the same formula for a parabola that um, you're used to. So I'm going to skip this visual. And this, I think, is a better visual for us as far as the coordinate plane goes. And we're going to see not just regular op opening parabolas, but also sideways parabolas today. This is that lovely general conic form for now it's a parabola that we're going to see in a moment. Um, we're going to, I don't know if it shows up in this lesson or not, but we're going to have to complete the square to determine what type of conic we have eventually. You know, let it be a, an ellipse or a circle, eventually a hyperbola. Um, but the definition of a parabola, that you can take a visual approach, right? It is a set of all points that are equidistant from a focus to a directrix. <laughs> so in a parabola shape, we're going to be able to calculate where the focus is located. And also we're going to calculate the line that's called the directrix. And if you had um, two strings that were the same size and you stood somewhere else, <laughs> you know what would be cool? We could do an activity like this. We're not going to now. Um, anywho, this length and this length are the same. And if you kept creating these same shapes here, these same points, you would create this parabolic looking shape. Uh, you don't have to really recognize where the formulas are coming from and how they're derived at this point. Yes, it would help when you're using them because we're going to have to go back to a formula sheet constantly otherwise. Uh, but you're going to see how the formula works in an algebraic function at least. And a little bit of geometry is going to come up today as well. Uh, quadratic function, remember this guy? That is a quadratic function. <laughs> but today we're going to talk about a different version of the quadratic function. So you're going to see both of these parabola formulas on your formula sheet somewhere and depending on whether the y or the x term is squared depends on how the parabola opens so if it's a horizontal parabola you're going to notice that the y minus k part of the formula is squared and if it's a regular or vertical um, parabola you're going to see that the x minus h part is squared so if this is the formula it's a variation of it but this is the formula that we have used before in quadratics and if you took Honors Algebra 2, you already know about what's called a directrix and a focus. Uh, you had a brief introduction to it last year, and if you're coming from regular Algebra 2, you probably don't have much experience with that. So let's talk about that a little bit today. So um, H and K and P are the three missing things that we're going to need to know. Okay, This slide's already kind of done for us, so that's nice. Um, this is our what is we refer to as a normal parabola. But if you think about how you could solve for y, because that's usually what our function looked like, the first thing we could do is multiply by a 1 over 4p, and that's right here. That's what they have written down here. And then the last step would be to add this k over to the other side. So if we did all that, we'd end up with 1 over 4p, and then x minus h quadrant squared plus k is my function for a, a regular vertical parabola. So this is new for most of us. 1 over 4p, we used to call that the a value. It told us how narrow and wide the parabola is. And we're going to find out in a moment what exactly that P does to our formula and how we can use it to graph. Before, when we were graphing parabolas, we usually just had to kind of find some points and figure out, like, I knew relatively whether we had a, a thin or a wide parabola, but this is going to give us a little more information about it. Um, this one, this is going to be new for everybody today. We have a sideways opening parabola today, so everything we know is backwards, basically, is the idea. So this is on your reference sheet. No need to memorize any of this, and you can always utilize this, but your fluency in using these formulas is going to be directly dependent on um, how often you practice these formulas. Because even for me, like I had to brush up on this and really think. I don't use this formula very often, so hopefully I'm not a bumbling teacher today. All right, a vertex still at HK. We need that. Um, the focus is directly above or sometimes below the vertex. So it has the same x value for your vertex, but the y value 
is a distance of p units either above or below the vertex depending on which way the parabola opens so i always remember the focus point is inside of the parabola and a good visualization for me is i think about a satellite dish and there's like a little antenna inside the satellite dish that's essentially the focus point of that parabolic trough so um there's some cool activities we could do hopefully we can get to them but that's how i remember you know what what it looks like when i graph a parabola and where the focus is and where the directrix is the directrix is out of the parabola and it's going to be the same distance away from the vertex that it was so if the focus is right above the vertex the directrix will be right below the vertex and it's the same distance so they use these formulas often and they're fine <laughs> and i don't mind you using them but sometimes i i take a graphic approach combined with the formulas because I can mess things up pretty well, can't I? All right, so sideways opening parabolas. The big difference is when you have a sideways opening parabola, you're going to notice that the y minus k value is what's being squared in the formula. Everything else looks very comparable and similar. Um, the formulas, again, some differences. This time the h plus p is the location of the focus because it's going to be slightly to the right or to the left of the vertex. Axis of symmetry is different um, because of the inversion. Um, and the directrix is x minus, uh, h minus p, excuse me, x equals h minus p. All right, this example. <clears throat> so it's already graphed for us. <laughs> That's nice. Um, they want us to identify the vertex, the focus, the axis of symmetry, and the directrix. So let's go through these one at a time. Um, I think on your notes it is also graphed, so that is wonderful because that way we can take a graphic approach to this. But the vertex we know is located at h comma k, and that's still going to be the same here. So ordered pairs are always ordered pairs when they're in the Cartesian coordinate plane. So 3 comma negative 4 is your vertex, which I can see in the formula, but I can also see it right here on the graph. Here's your vertex. They graphed the location of the focus, but they also gave me the formula, remember. So this number right here, this is 4 times p. So if I did a little solving, I found out that p is a distance of 3 units. Well, look at this visual here, guys. It is literally 3 units up from your vertex. And then I know my uh, video monitor part is kind of cutting it off here, but this guy right here is the directrix, and he is literally 3 units down from the vertex. So as far as calculating the focus and the directrix, that's a good visual for it. But now if I want to use the formula, the focus is h comma um, oops, k plus p. So for us, that would be 3 comma, and then negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1, right? So that's kind of a really long, difficult way to do that. But our focus point is at 3, negative 1. But yeah, I already knew that because they had it plotted for me. Um, next, directrix is at the equation y equals k minus p so the k value was negative 4 and then if i subtract the p value I end up with y equals negative 7 which is exactly where this line is located so that's wonderful i'm glad that the graph and the algebra is matching up here the axis of symmetry is x equals h so that's this guy right here so the axis of symmetry which i abbreviate like this is x equals 3. We already found the directrix. Someone already graphed it, so we're good to go. All right, and actually, <laughs> I think that question was already done for you on your notes, so I'm glad we can walk through it without having the answers in front of us. That's nice. All right, this next one's not done for us, though, and this is on your paper. And the first thing I want to notice is what kind of parabola I'm looking at, because I really I need to take a graphical approach, otherwise I mess it up. So I noticed the y plus 1 term is being squared, which tells me I have a horizontal parabola. And it's a positive value here for p, so that tells me we have a, a parabola that's going to open to the right. So I'm going to make myself a little note. It's going to look like this. It keeps me in check, all right? Um, let's talk about where the vertex is located. Vertex is always at h comma k. The h is always grouped with the x. So the vertex is at 3, negative 1. And then the focus point, remember this is the weird sideways one. So the formula for the focus point is h plus p comma k. So for us, 
I should probably figure out who P is, huh? All right, this guy right here. This is 4P. So if I do a little backward solving, turns out P is 2. 2 units. So for my formula here, um, H plus P would be 3 plus 2, comma, negative 1. So that's better known as 5, negative 1. All right, these are our notes, so I really don't mind like writing out things that seem really obvious after the fact, because they're your notes. You want to know where things came from, right? Uh, let's start plotting some things. We have 3, negative 1 for a vertex, and then 5, negative 1 for your focus point. I always draw it as a star on my graph, and then we're going to be having a parabola that opens up like this, right? Um, for the rest of the problem, we do have to find the directrix and the axis of symmetry, so let's go ahead and get the axis of symmetry real quick. For a horizontal parabola, the axis of symmetry is um, y equals k. So for us, that would be y equals negative 1, which is right here. It goes straight through the vertex and the focus. And then the other thing I want to come up with is the directrix line. So the directrix line is x equals, uh, I always get this one backwards, h minus p. There we go. Sorry. So for us, h was, what was it, 3 minus p would be minus 2. So it turns out our directrix line is x equals 1. Probably could have figured that out, guys, because remember they're equidistant from the vertex. So if your focus was two to the right, your directrix would be two to the left. So this is where the directrix line is, which is at x equals one. So yes. And then what we'd have to do at this point is we would have to plot like at least one or two points. Um, Some kids want to use their calculator here. I just don't know if that's worth your time, you know. So what if I plugged in... It's kind of gross, though, isn't it? Right? You're trying to solve for some stuff. Um, what if I plugged in some values for... Okay, I'm going to do a little reworking over here. Okay, I'm going to start with this. I'm a really bad grapher, so I probably just kind of fudge in what the picture looks like when I graph this on a key. But it wouldn't be that hard for us to rearrange that equation up top and solve for x. So if I were to solve for this x, the first thing I do is I divide by 8 or multiply by 1 eighth. So it would be like 1 eighth um, y plus 1 squared, and then we'd add that 3 over. Now I know that seems awful, <laughs> but look what we could do now. If you can plug in anything you want for y, because it's inverted, you can calculate the x value, and then we'd have enough information to to come up with something. So I'm going to choose a number that basically is going to give me a nice output. So whenever I square this number, I have to be able to have something that's nicely divisible by 8. So what if I made y a 3? Look how crafty I am. 3 plus 1 is 4. 4 squared is 16. 8 16 is 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. Ooh. All right. <laughs> so 1, 2, 3. I can't count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3. That's one of my points in my parabola. Oh gosh, and all that work and I can't draw it, so that's a bummer. All right, so you end up with this really ugh, wide parabola. And what we're going to notice is that after we graph a few of these, the larger your p-value, um, the wider the parabola is. So <laughs> that doesn't even look like a parabola. All right, sorry. Um, let's, let's move on. That was just bad. All right, this one, this is a vertical parabola, and since the p-value is positive, we're going to have a parabola that opens up like this. So let's start with finding the location of the vertex. It's at negative 2, positive 1. And your focus is at, using my formula for focus, which is h comma k, whoops, plus p. So what would that be? be negative 2 comma, oh, I should figure out what p is, huh? I always forget that. All right, this is 4p. So if I kind of work backwards, p is 1. I got that. All right, k plus p. So 1 plus 1 is 2. <laughs> so the focus point is at negative 2, 2. All right, let's plot something. Oh, I hate when they come by 2. All right, negative 2, 1, right there. And then your focus is at negative 2, 2, which is right there, and it's a distance of one unit above it, which means my directrix is one unit below it, so my directrix will be at um, y equals 0. 
Now, if you're not sure where that came from visually, you could use the formula, which was k minus p, and that would be 1 minus 1, which is how I got the 0. I just take a visual approach. All right, moving along. Um, the other thing they needed me to find was the axis of symmetry, which would be at x equals negative 2, straight through the focus and the vertex. And then, yes, again, ideally I should find some nice points. But remember, it's, it's equidistant from this blue and red part here. If I draw any given point on my parabola, we have a pretty small p-value, so we have a pretty normal-looking parabola. Uh, the p is 1, which means it's, like, super normal, right? Um, <laughs> see, this is, what I, this is what I mean, guys. I can, I can calculate all the points you want, but, like, it's not going to come out right because I can't graph. All right, so what I should have done is I should have solved this equation for y. So I would have divided by 4 or multiplied by 1 for it for that x plus 2 squared side, and then I would have added the 1 over. So then I would have created a little bit of a mental t-table, and I really just needed one point. Again, I want something that when I apply this 1 fourth to this fraction, like it comes out nice. So what if I plugged in x equals 2? because this is 4 squared, which is 16, 1 fourth of 16 is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5. So I should have plotted 2, 5, and do you see how bad I did? Oh gosh. Totally awesome job of Ruzo. Try again. Alright. <laughs> God. Terrible. Alright. Um, this one, the y quantity is being squared, which means I have a sideways parabola. My p-value is positive, I can notice, so it's a horizontal right opening parabola. Speaking of the p-value, let's talk about that because I think it's a fraction this time. 2 is my 4 times my p-value, so if I solve for p, I get 1 half or 0.5. So what we're going to see and what that does to the graph is it's kind of unusual. It's going to make it really thin because remember what p represents. Um, let's find the vertex though. Let's start there. So the vertex is still at hk, so 6, 3. And because we have a sideways horizontal parabola, our focus is going to use the ordered pair um, x plus p, comma, k. So for us, or h plus p, comma, k. So we have 6 plus half, gross, so 6.5, comma, k, 3. So there's our focus. Let's plot and make sure that's making sense. I hate when they count by twos. All right. I should just redo this whole worksheet where it doesn't count by twos anymore, I guess. Frankly, I feel like half these worksheets could use double the space, so maybe next year I'll retype them, huh? 6.5. Oh, yeah, like I'm going to be able to do that. <laughs> oh, nailed it. All right, cool. All right, and then do you notice it's like a half, half point above it, which means my directrix would be... Not there. All right, <laughs> directrix is at, um, if you want to use the formula, it's at x equals h minus p. So for us, that would be 6 minus 0.5. So that would be x equals 5.5, which clearly I graphed that. I did not. And then I'm going to fudge this in because I'm just running out of time. Again, I, I should have rewritten it and found some ordered pairs, at least one to give me a good representation of what this parabola looked like. But the idea is the smaller the p-value, the more narrow your parabola, regardless of what direction it's open. All right. Oh, this one's fun. It's trying to trick me because it's not even like in the right position here. And this term is supposed to be over here. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides of this equation by negative 12. So that way these are gone. And the equation is actually x minus 3 squared equals negative 12 times y minus 6. So this is 4 times your p-value. So if you solve for p, you're going to get p is negative 3. So this time, I have a vertical parabola, but because p is negative, it's going to open downwards. So that does not surprise me. Let's find the vertex. It is at 3, 6. The focus the formula for a vertical focus is at h comma k plus p. So for us, that would be at 3 comma, and then 6 plus negative 3 would be at 3, 3. 
So let's plot those two things and make sure they're making sense. Or to, ugh, twos again. All right, three, six, and then three, three. And the p-value is three units, you know, so three units below it is the vertex, uh, the focus, and then three units above the vertex would be the directrix, which we do have to identify in line. So the directrix here, the formula is, um, hello, k minus p. So for us, that would be six minus a negative three, which is y equals nine, which I know it doesn't look like it, but that's what I was supposed to graph. Now this is, I know it's negative, but it's a large p-value, so you're going to have a very, very wide parabola. Um, and I did not do a very good job of graphing this. Like, what's new, you know? But if I were to rearrange my formula and solve for y, um, that negative 1 12th is now in front here. Oh, gross. I don't think I'm going to want to even come up with a point here, guys. Um, if I could get a 36, that'd be good, huh? All right, so what if I plug in x equals 9? Yeah, yeah. All right, so x equals 9. Um, let's see, if I plug in a 9 here, that's 6 squared 36, negative 1 twelfth times 36 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 6 is 3. So, supposedly, this parabola goes through the ordered pair. Yuck. 9, <laughs> 3. Oh my goodness. It was a very large and in-charge parabola, guys. All right, we're moving along. Oh, I, I left off the axis of symmetry, the easiest part, and I forgot it. It's the line that splits through the vertex and the focus, so that is the line x equals 3. Gosh, be golly, this is just awful. All right, so what's going on in this one? Let's see here. Sometimes I have to write equations, apparently. All right, so I'm going to be given clues. I'm going to be told that... Here's the focus and the vertex in this particular example. Um, I need some other clues about like what direction this parabola should be opening, and that's based on where the focus and directrix are. They don't have to tell me. Um, this one's kind of already done for us, but what they did is they plotted the vertex at 1, negative 3, and then they also plotted the focus at negative 4, negative 3, or they, someone plotted it. And then they determined that because of the direction of how everything was opening, that we have a horizontal parabola that was, you know, opening the opposite way. So the p-value had to be negative. Um, that also determines which formula we should be looking at. So the focus formula for a k-value has to be negative 3. And then for this guy, negative 4, you know h. So it would be 1 plus p. <laughs> so 1 plus p equals negative 4. And if you solved for that, you got p was negative 5. But I think we kind of already knew that, right? If we took a visual approach, and I asked myself, like, how far away are the focus and the vertex? They're 5 units away. And because of the direction, I knew it had to be a negative 5 because it was opening that way. So p was negative 5. Whether you took an algebraic formula approach or a graphic approach, I don't care. The h value and k value we knew from the vertex here. So h is 1, k is negative 3. And that's really all you need to know to write the equation. So for a sideways opening parabola, it's y minus k, so y plus 3 squared, equals 4 times p, so negative 20, gross, and then x minus h, so x minus 1. And don't do any more work to it. They don't want you to do anything else, so leave it in that weird, funky form. All right. It's a lovely equation, isn't it? All right, moving along. So here, very similar problem. They give you the focus and the vertex, and I don't like to just rotely use formulas because I just don't have the brain space for like keeping things straight in my head. So I'm going to do a little plotting here. Um, oh, again, they count by twos. All right, <laughs> negative one, five. I am not happy. There's your vertex. No, that's your focus. Wrong color. That's your focus. Focus, the bruiser. All right, oh, one more thing. We have a vertex at two, five. Two, five. All right, so again, we have one of these sideways opening parabolas, so our p-value I know has to be something negative because it's opening to the, the other side, and it's a horizontal parabola. So the formula that we're going to be using is the y minus k squared equals 4p x minus h. 
All right, our job is to figure out everything. I think we know a lot of things if we stop and look. We know our vertex gives us our h and our k clue. And while, yes, I can use the formula, I don't think I need to, because all I need now is the p-value. If you can tell me how far apart the focus and the vertex are, we have p. So negative 1 to 2, that is a distance of 3 units. But because it's opening that direction, the p-value is a negative 3. So going to our formula, we have y minus k, which is 5 squared, equals 4 times p would be negative 12, and then x minus h, which is x minus 2. All right. Easy peasy, 11 squeezy. Um, in case you're curious, another way to find the p-value would be to use that formula again. So um, this number right here, negative 1, is our h value plus p. So if you go back and you substitute in that you know h is 2, you could solve for p by subtracting 2 from both sides. So that works for me as well. All right, this one's a little exciting because they give me some different clues. They do tell me it opens downwards, so we have um, this vertical parabola, which I'm going to write down the formula, since that was like a dead giveaway, wasn't it? <laughs> Why it looks weird. All right. Um, I know my vertex. That's exciting. That means I know my h and my k. Let's go ahead and plot that. Oh, again, with the twos. All right. <laughs> Five, three. And then we're going to plot the directrix. So the line is at y equals six. So visually, I can tell the distance. So we can tell the distance from the vertex to the directrix, and that's going to be our p-value if you want to take like a graphic approach to it. So, oh, so I'm just counting by twos, isn't it? So this is a distance of three, right? But remember, it's it's opening downward, so that means my p-value is a negative three. Again, with the negative three. Although I feel like something's not right there. No, that's not right. Back up. Back up a moment. I messed something up. Back up. All right. <laughs> Sorry, five, three, I did not mark that right. Directrix is six, y equals six. Okay, okay. Vertex, direct, I think we're okay actually. I think I have a mistake on my key. My key confused me, is that what happened? I don't know. Pause for a moment. Hey, the mistake on my key. That's why I was so confused. Okay, so yes, this is a distance of three units, but it's opening downwards, so our p-value is going to be a negative three. I, th I think we're good to go, guys. I think we can just put this all in the formula. x minus h is x minus 5 squared. 4 times p would be negative 12. And then y minus k is y minus 3. Lovely. Leave it. All right, let's see. I do have just a teensy bit of time here before my kids come in. Um... This is a good one to do, so let's take a look at it. It opens to the right, so we have one of these parabolas. <laughs> Awful. Okay, so our formula is the y minus k squared equals 4p and then x minus h. So the focus is an interesting point. I am going to plot it. <sighs> I'm going to count one and a half. All right, one and a half, one. Here's our focus. The other clue they give me is the directrix, which is at 0.5 x equals 0.5. So if I think about the vertex being smack dab in the middle of those two, that means my vertex is at um, 1, 1. So that is very important because those are my h and k values. And then I don't think I needed to use any formulas. Isn't the p-value just the distance between the vertex and one of those other guys? So it's opening to the right, so it's a positive p-value, and it's a distance of 1 half or 0.5. So Plug and chug. All right, y minus k, which is 1. 4 times this p-value would be 2. <laughs> I don't know why that was so hard for me to figure out. Times x minus 1. All right. All right, I think we're good to go. All right, we're going to stop the lesson there. There's a part 2 to this lesson because it gets more exciting. So look forward to that.